Hi, this is Dorothy with Dot Scrapbooking, and this is layout number two for the Evergreen Workshop. So I just wanted to give you a preview of what I'm going to be working on and how it's going to turn out. So thanks for coming by. I appreciate you coming to my channel. And uh, you can purchase, if you like this kit, you can purchase it at dorothy.closetomyheart.com. And I am now going to show you how to. Hi, this is Dorothy with Thought Scrapbooking, and I am working on the second layout for Evergreen. So there's, um, I've already cut the pieces and I put them with each of its background pages. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out. Uh, the die cuts that go with uh, the second layout. That's Daisy talking to me. Um, so I am just looking for all the Project 2 pieces. So this one has two little banners that are going to come out. And um, there's a little strip, a little tab that's going there. All of the rest of these look like they're Project 3s. So I'm going to set those aside, and uh, here we've got the uh, layout for, whoops, that's number three. Don't need those, get confused enough. So here is pro uh, paper right page, left page, and right page. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the top page there to do the left first, and then we'll do the right so the best thing, and I've said this before over and over, the best thing to do is to do a dry layout to make sure that you've got all of your pieces together. And um, I was missing a piece. It took me a while to figure it out. But I have a box here, so the instructions say, and this is purely optional, to um, take your white gloss spray and uh, kind of put it in a box so you're not making a big mess all over your work area um, because it is kind of hard to get off to tell you the truth so I'm just going to make sure my sprayer is working and uh, go ahead and put the page down and spritz I'm spritzing both corners because it was kind of hard to tell honestly in the instructions just where all the uh, white gloss spray went so I'm just going to go ahead and do these corners, and I'm being pretty pretty liberal with the paint, to tell you the truth. I kind of like the way it looks, so you can be as sparse or as liberal as you want to be um, with your pages. So, I mean, I was really tempted to put it all over, but, you know, I try to, I try to restrain myself. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the, uh, my glue to the corners, to tack those in place so when I place things on there I can use my rulers on my layout mat to eyeball things. So the first thing that's going to go down, the easy pieces, right? So it's going to be the zip strip going on the far left edge all the way to the very edge of the paper. And then we've got about a three quarter of an inch piece and it gets, that's wrong, is it? No, that, I guess that's the way it goes. Um, goes right to the edge of the zip strip. It's the next page that uses the green side. So I'm going ahead and putting the green piece up. And it's two inches in and two inches down. So that's pretty easy to, to eyeball with the mat. You know, things just get, when you're going into more fractions, it's uh, sometimes better to pick pick out your your ruler and do the fine tuning but you know pretty much eyeballing takes care of it so um, these are the two die cuts and I was thinking that it was saying to put the spray on there but it's kind of talking about what to use the speckled um, egg distressed oxide on and I this is where I realized that I'm missing a piece a six and a half by one inch piece and so I am searching for it and what going through all of my pieces, what I find is I didn't cut it. So I had to go cut it, cut another piece. 
So this is, uh, I'm just trying to figure out just exactly the, <laughs> what, what did I do? And, you know, once again, you can never be too particular about doing your laying out and figuring out what, what goes where before you start working on your, so there I'm finding that that piece is wrong. So I went ahead and just got out my bag of leftover papers and um, went ahead and cut a piece. And so it is six and a half by one. Pretty simple. And I'm butting it right up to the pine green edge. And then the tab goes right there, about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. I'm just kind of roughing, trying to get rid of the little, um, little pieces of paper that hold that piece onto the carrier sheet for the die cuts. And sometimes they stick out. That was a darker piece, so it, they kind of stuck out. So um, this goes on top of the pine. And you just want to make sure you've got your notes going in the right direction. Because after you put your pictures on and you have your notes upside down, you'll kick yourself. So this is pretty simple. It's like two and three-fourths inches down. And you're just showing about a quarter of an inch on either side of the pine paper. And I'm putting my four by six reminder of what size photo goes there. And all of these, I'm putting the dark side of, uh, oh, I forgot the name of that paper. Anyway, it's, it's facing upwards. Okay, that color is acorn, so I'm using the darker side of acorn, and it gets a three by three, so it was cut at three and a quarter by four and a quarter, and uh, I'm going to um, put the die cut music circle on top of the scallop circle, and I am going to go ahead and um, cut that in half. I'm going to put those two pieces together. <laughs> Excuse me cut it in half, hiccup. So I'm trying to figure out what to do over there. So before I do it, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the um, cluster that is on the left-hand side of the page. So this is the title, and, you know, it's like slow, snowflakes. What is it? Like snowflakes. We are all beautiful in our own way. And I am going to go ahead and pop it up with some of the thin foam tape. And that way it makes it a little bit easier to tuck things underneath because there's a few things that go under. But it's not sticking up a whole lot. So I'm just kind of putting it like that. Now I will come back and do... So that's a, a circle with a heart cut out, and I went ahead and left the heart on the carrier sheet because <clears throat> we'll use it later. Um, so it's kind of a neat thing. You have this circle. You have two pieces of embellishment that uh, are, you know, one piece that can be used with two pieces. So kind of cool. So I'm putting my little gold, um, green fronds down. I love those things. And I like they're on all the layouts. So I'm going ahead and popping out all of these pieces. Because there's, for one thing, there's not too many of them. And I'm, it just makes it easier to see what you, what you have. And I'm keeping them all in the bag. We've got a stamp there. And then look at these wonderful pine cones. How cool are those? So those are all, I'm going to keep out that one branch, and then um, all the rest of these things are going back into the bag. And what I should have done was pop out, those are the French vanilla hearts that they talk about in the instructions. And I was kind of confused of where those hearts were. Well, they're, that's where they are. 
So, um, and they will get colored also with the speckled egg, uh, distressed oxide. So I'm kind of making this wonderful cluster over on the uh, left lower corner. And just trying to figure out exactly where all these little pieces go. So that, this is a little heart that says peace. And that, it's not a heart, it's an eight, um, pine cone that says peace, which if only because good grief, we're in a mess. We are just in a mess. So the little tag goes up, up at the top and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave. It could get cut down some. Um, and I love this stamp, really love that. And I love, I just got all of my Christmas stamps to go on my card. So if you haven't gotten your Christmas stamps at the post office, I was uh, upset with myself because last year I missed getting Christmas stamps. They had run out completely. So see, there's that craft colored heart that's going in the circle. And now we still have the little blue circle left. I'm thinking it goes there, but it doesn't. So don't put that there. That is one of those French vanilla hearts is supposed to go up there. And see, because that heart blends too much, in too much with um, what's on the background. So I want to, I kind of wanted to do the speckle all around the uh, title, but what uh, I'm doing instead is just adding this hint of color in the center of the uh, title. So I love that. It just, it, you're adding detail. Anytime you're adding detail, you're adding interest to your um, whatever piece you're doing. And so always try to, if not, these are the vanilla hearts and the snowflakes and flowers and all these wonderful pieces. Um, so anytime you can add interest, I would suggest you do so, either in terms of the height of the elements or a little bit of color um, that you can smush on something. Uh, so I'm taking these vanilla hearts and they say to add a little bit of the speckled egg distress oxide onto the hearts. Now I spend a lot of time trying to figure out where the second heart goes. Um, it goes on the next layout. So I tried and I thought because they had you do two of them with this part of the instructions that it had to have gone there. So see how that heart shows up much better. Um, there than the same color heart. I about drove myself crazy trying to find where where that heart went. Um, so this little snowflake, the snowflake sticker goes on there and then we're gonna pop out these little branches because they go with the green fronds. Just gonna add a little tack to the bottom part and then it goes underneath there. So look at all the layering there. You have so many different layers of things um, that it just makes for a super interesting cluster. So when you make these clusters, you want to have a bunch of things that coordinate with your papers, with your colors uh, of your layout. And it just adds so much interest. And it's nice to have it all around the title to kind of highlight the title. So here are all of our French vanilla pieces that we're going to pull out later on. Ooh, there's a lost snowflake that got on there. I don't even know if I find that. So the uh, green is down so tight that I'm just going to go ahead and glue the notes onto the scallop circle and then take it over and cut it in half. It's about a four inch across scallop. So it's getting cut to about two inches in half. So you can take that second half and use it for another layout or a card or, you know, whatever you want to. So I'm just kind of tucking it. And there's the tool that I've been looking for. Um, so look at how easy that made it to fit under there. So we've got two more fronds that are going to go down here and a white one, two more greens and a white. 
going to go ahead and put those those down. So I'm just putting it on the very end to hold it in place. So just so much more interest. Gosh, it just kind of amazes me when I think of how plain I used to do things a whole bunch of years ago. I'm so grateful that Close to My Heart has kind of um, shown us how to add embellishment with adding to the page rather than taken, taken from it by putting in too much stuff. And so they've got, you know, really good artists that, that really help us make something that we're really, really proud of. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I, not being a, you know, a very artistic person, um, I really appreciate when, uh, you know, somebody can give me the instructions. You know, it's sort of like, I'm not a chef, but I can cook and I use recipes. Now, will I adjust those recipes? There almost isn't any recipe that I follow 100%. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of the same way with scrapbooking. You know, I like to follow, but then, you know, I'll add some of my own stuff. But I'm not a chef and I'm not an artist, but I can be the technician and add add things to it that make me happy. And so that's what I want for you all is that you can make something that you're really proud of and it's really beautiful and enhances your pictures. Uh, doesn't cause you a whole lot of fret because you're reading instructions just like you're reading a recipe. But you can totally make your adjustments to that recipe. Just saying. So... I appreciate artists. And now we're going to go on to page two. And it kind of gave up on that heart on what to do. So we'll worry about that later. So I'm going to go down and put the pieces. I went ahead and there's, you know, the spray in the corner. Got my zip. Gotta love that zip strip. Really, really like it. And so I'm putting down this piece and I think that's probably about three-fourths of an inch and the zip strip is half an inch so um, yeah that's three-fourths of an inch so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, didn't tack my page down okay so I kind of noticed that they have a spritz of the uh, gloss spray up in the corner of this piece so I spritzed the heck out of that, didn't I? <laughs> I do like that spray, but I was a little close. You're supposed to be eight inches from your surface. But you know what? Did I tell you how much I like that spray? So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Okay, this goes an inch over from that three-quarter inch strip. And uh, now I've got it. It's all wet, so what am I going to do? <laughs> So I'm just going around the outside edge, and if it gets on the inside of that background page, it's okay. So when I'm coming down like an inch and three quarters down from the top, and here we've got another piece of that paper, but the music on the other side is going to show. So you want to make sure that you've got your notes going in the right direction, except I realize that, oop. Okay, number one, let's get this tacked into place. First things first. And do you ever notice how many pieces of paper I end up having stuck to my hand or fingers? <laughs> okay, this green piece, it goes down next. And it is... <laughs> I drive myself crazy. Okay, we're going two inches over and like one inch down or three quarters of an inch down and there goes the music the music is kind of has a half an inch clearance above and below top and bottom okay so here's our acorn background for our pictures and it is relax Dorothy one and a half inches over from the side 
from the left side and I'm going to put my four by six. That singing in the background is really loud. Have a movie going back in the other room. Okay, so I've got a piece of pine that is going over to the side here and it actually goes under that color. That's right. And I'm trying to get it. So that strip, that longer strip is gonna hold two three by threes. Now I will tell you, you've got plenty of space. If you wanna put a, a four by six picture there and have a four and a quarter by six and a quarter um, piece of acorn, you could totally do that depending on the pictures that you want to go there. Um, but this is just about a quarter of an inch longer. So it's about six and a half by three and a quarter. So two three by three pictures are going there with about an eighth of an inch in between or so, quarter of an inch, about an eighth of an inch. And then we have another piece of the dotted scallop. And I am going to cut that down so that there's like, uh, what was that? Maybe about an inch or so of the scallop circle. I think that's what I cut off is about an inch of the scallop and I'm scooching it under the acorn. I'm just kind of, kind of getting it under there. And so I'm going to scooch it to try to center it. Scooching, scooching. Here we go. So now I have two pieces of the scalloped circle that I can use for whatever I want. And I will be making another, probably a single page layout with whatever I've got left over and maybe a couple of cards. So I'll, I'll do that as I develop it. Now look at this piece. So this is going to go, um, so there's a sticker. And I kind of thought that was one sticker, but it's not. It's two stickers. So it's this frame that goes here on top of the green. But then I cannot find, for the life of me, the piece that was supposed to be in white on the center. So, I mean, I looked and looked and looked and could not find anything. So I, I, I mean, maybe I'm overlooking something. There's always that possibility. But what I ended up doing, so I'm kind of, I'm wet, taking time here and putting all the other pieces in place. So this little sticker goes up there. You can place your pine cones up or down, depending on um, how you like them. I have a tendency to have my pine cones go down rather than up. But it's just a just whatever your preference is. And then this lantern, and isn't that a fun shape? That shape probably has a name, but I don't know what it is. Um, so I'm using a little bit of anti-static to kind of put powder over the stickum so I can put the picture underneath that, slide it underneath. And that goes down in the corner. And so I'm, I'm kind of trying to think of what to do with that inside part there. And in the meantime, I'm pulling out all the pieces that I need for this cluster. So we're going to have two clusters now. So picture the last cluster was on the lower left side of the left page, right? So this cluster is the lower right side of the right page. So we're going to have two clusters that are on the bottom that kind of help frame the uh, layout on the bottom. So I kind of, you know, it's kind of, you could put them diagonal, but it just kind of finishes off this beautiful layout. And I really do think this is a beautiful layout. So there's a little think that was the love or maybe joy. And this little center part goes right in the middle of that scallop. So if you notice, we've got a repeating scallop 
and uh, which is a really nice design element to have um, some of your design pieces uh, complement each other. So we've got scallops uh, going, and so it just makes everything all kind of um, make sense and go together. And, you know, that's another design element that is an artistic thing that you see in architecture and, you know, in, in different places. But, you know, copying a element, if it's a scallop in this, pla in this case, um, or, you know, the house that I used to docent for at the Dallas Arboretum, um, their uh, element was an octagon. So the house, if you split it in half, was an octagon. The foyer, when you walked in, was an octagon. The baptismal font that was there that was 800 years old was an octagon. And you saw octagons all over the place. It was so darn cool. And that's where I learned to appreciate having the same element carry through a particular design you're doing. So I'm just saying. Um, the other piece that I'm having a hard time with is there is like this, it looks to me like they cut the bottom half of that um, journaling card off because I don't know where else they got that little piece that looks like that. I don't like doing this, but I can still use that as a journaling card. And that is going to go right along there. And it just adds a little, a little something to that, um, you know, layering just completes a uh, design. So this little heart that I used on the other page is now going there. And look at how much better that heart looks there than it did on the first page. So that's how you know it didn't belong on the first page. So I love that. Now, so I've got all these other things, and there's my puzzle. What do I do with it? So I looked at all the pieces again. I went searching for stuff that I may have missed in the die cuts, and I'm puzzled. So what I do is I take measurements. That doesn't fit. You know, none of the, none of the elements there fit right. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of French vanilla from the leftover pieces in that came with this whole kit. There was a big piece of French vanilla cardstock left. I cut it to two and a quarter by two and three quarters and ended up making a tiny little frame around that little piece. And then off camera, I will add lines to do my journaling on that. So look at how cute that looks. I, I, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm like, I made my own little frame, so I've got a multi-level frame there. So there we go. And uh, that's it. I hope you love this evergreen. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful, uh, those are the pieces that I have left. I'm going to put them in with all my other pieces, um, uh, other die cuts and stuff. Um, so this is evergreen. I think it's an absolutely wonderful workshop. Um, it's great for winter scenes. You know, it's got kind of a festive element to it, but just perfect for winter scenes. So there we go. Look at how gorgeous that is. It's, <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. I really think this is really beautiful. Just straightening out my camera. Look at that. That looks better actually. So thank you so much for watching. And um, you're as beautiful as a snowflake. Take care. Bye now. Hi, I'm Dorothy Smith. Thanks for watching my video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel and learn along with me. Thanks. Bye-bye.